Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure back in LA, central LA, um, on location as you can see. And look who I found! Hi. It's Frank Music. Hello. How are you, How you doing, Lee? You alright, mate? <laughs> good, I'm good. It's been a minute, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a, few, a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, it has. It has. I mean, you're, you're a seasoned um, Californian. Yeah, I am now. Yep. Still got the accent, though. Just. Yeah. Although, when I go back to England, taxi drivers think I'm Australian. And you don't win on the other side of the pond either because they think you're Australian here for the first South African or Australian, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> One of those two, generally. Why do you think that is? I've got a theory about it. What's your theory? My theory is that to compensate, in a more sympathetic uh, British way, we lean towards a, a nylon accent. A nylon accent? New York, London. Oh, wow, yeah. I've never heard that term yeah. before. I like that. Yeah, I mean, Kelly Osbourne swears by it. Oh, as does, as, she does a lot of swearing. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah and that too, yeah. <laughs> Mark Ronson does it. And I think what it is, is like when you get over, when you, when you get off the boat and you start like talking away, you say, can I have a water? Yep. And people are like, what? Yeah, you've got to start dropping those T's mm. rapidly. Yeah. Have you, have you suffered any of that? Uh, uh, yeah. The, it's the, the salad and the salmon is a, a common one, is uh, when you order a salmon and you get a salad. They're too embarrassed to ask you again <laughs> what they say. What you're saying, they 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 want to be like. I'm pretty sure I got what he said. Yeah, but yeah, it's fine. It's fine. That that's really the least of my problems. <laughs> yeah, people yeah. People not understanding me. Oh, you think is there is there is there, is there problems with being a, 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 a is it an expat? Uh, yeah, I think the biggest problem with being an expat is other expats. Interesting. Yeah. Explain. It's it's, um, it's a competition out here. That's why really? I avoid. Going to Santa Monica, it's uh, it's because you obviously have to be doing something in order to maintain yourself out here, you know, in another country, which requires visas and stuff. So mm. you got it's it's like who's got the biggest? Who is it? Really? I I find whenever I it's like oh so what what are you out here for? And it's like I don't want to talk to you about anything right now, especially why the <laughs> fuck I'm out here. Can I swear? Uh, I hope I can. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go go fuels. Yeah, yeah. We're British. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we invented swearing. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it comes out so much better from our Yes. Um, that's interesting that it's like that. Maybe that's a competitive spirit, that, uh, or yeah. rather just jealousy. I think it's a bit of both. I mm. think that we, I think as British people, we have what, what some, someone once said to me is fuck you culture, which mm. is very good because it's, um, if you, if you can't, this is what annoys me about the current situation we're in where you, you know, you've got to be, you know, tell every kid that they're great and special and everything. It's like Britain was about, no, go for yourself. <laughs> and that's what created greatness. Mm -hmm. And, where, you know, it's how we got the Beatles, it's how we got Bowie because they had to fight against everyone. It's like, no, you're not special. Mm -hmm. well, who do you think you are, mate? You know, that, who do you think you are, mate? And that is great. It sucks, but it's great in terms of if you get ahead of that, yeah. then you then you could be the thing that we haven't seen yet. You break through that. Yeah. Yeah. America's all about here's a pie, and how, how much of my your ass do I have to kiss to get a slice of that pie? So they don't have fuck you culture here to your face. No, they I'll don't. They'll say fuck you behind your back. And they still want a piece. <laughs> the UK is like, fuck you and keep your pie, pie as well. <laughs> yeah, because that toughens your skin, doesn't it? And, it, and the next thing you yeah. Yep. And, and with, I remember when I was a kid and I used to see like rap acts and rock and roll acts and, you know, maybe not so much the dance world, but a lot yep. of those kind of more American grown um, musical yep. sp sports, they were so robust and refined and confident. And, yep. um, what we had as B Brits was, the reinvention of that and you know throwing it back at them but doing it with a really i don't give go yeah well don't punk punk was a great example of exactly. anti-establishment and uh, it, it was exciting i mean like johnny rotten and, and mm. these it was it's weird watching the mainstream because you know, when, when, when we're pretty similar age but it was how the, the mainstream was cancer even though we, what both of us dabbled in the mainstream it, 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 growing up it was cancer. And, and now it's like, if you're not in the mainstream, yeah. you're no one. And that even goes for people, you know, who are like Marilyn Manson and stuff like that now. It's like, you, it's, the mainstream is the only way to survive. Um, and that's, like you say, I think dabbling is one thing, but actually signing up. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's a real hard one because um, as a kid, I just, you know, my attitude towards pop music hasn't changed today like it did you know when i was 13 it was the same yep i just can't like i know good music yep but you don't have to go there 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's so hot. like the the bubble gum stuff. I just mm. I still it's 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 just not in my my thing. Well, that's I I I think the world would be a scary place if everyone well that was yeah. the thing for everyone. Yeah, having stuff like that. <laughs> that was your thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a bit like um, meat free and meat eaters, vegans. Yep. Like the industry. did I tell you I'm a vegan? You're a vegan? No, Are you vegan? Okay. That's, what, that's what every vegan <laughs> that's what will tell you. Says, yeah. Yeah. Everyone's a vegan up until 12 o'clock when they've drunk too much. Ah. <laughs> Do you know? It's like I don't smoke until yeah, yeah, exactly. five beers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm get, that's, that's a bit of me as well at the moment. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's the swing, the pendulum, doesn't it? It's like if if too many people like the underground stuff, it's the same if everyone goes too vegan. Yeah, it's like, you're, 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 you're fart huffing, like the South Park thing it's uh it's well i mean it's it's the jealous possessiveness of subcultures uh, you know you have these uh you know you you get hyper specialized at any one thing i mean i used to be super into bowling and you would be surprised to think that like 10 pin bowling it's and, and that is just it, there are insane people who are like you into bowling yeah oh yeah oh really what, to what level of what seven bowling balls what? bowled wow. in vegas my team won that kind of vibe how old are you what was it last year Oh, so, you, so this is recent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's out here. You can't so don't, don't, don't do it in the UK. I do it out here. Yeah. Big Lebowski style. Oh yeah, without the gun. Yeah. <laughs> without the without the purple velour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Jesus. <laughs> See, I've, I was about to ask what you've been up to, and uh, yeah, you know, it's mainly hobbies. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I do work. Yeah, of course. But I prefer hobbies. I think uh, <laughs> when when you're a creator, um, instead of just a performer, um, where there are people like you know Beyonce who is a musical performer and this is the other thing that's that's so annoying and frustrating about the pop music stuff is the general public don't know all the things that we know there are mm. the performers and then there are the creators yeah. you know everyone assumes that Beyonce is just a creator and they forget that no she's just she's like Whitney Houston she is a performer of other people's creations yeah and it's exhausting creating all the time. So sometimes I like to just do other things. I mean, I, I would say that I spent my time 50% hobby, 50% um, work right now. What other I only work three days a week. What other hobbies? I paint miniature models. Um, paint, Warhammer. Yeah, that's the one. I have a whole separate Instagram account just for my model painting that I don't tell anyone about. Oh, until right now. <laughs> until now, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. It's fun. Um, you must have been gutted when Meltdown shut. Heartbroken. It's, I just um, looked, I walked past it. Meltdown, for those of you that don't know, the, the area in, on Sunset, well, on the Sunset, um, well, it's not the Strip, is it? We, no, no, it is, yeah. It's the strip. Yeah. yeah. And just across the road from here, studio, which I'm sure now, come to think about it, was conveniently placed. Um, I lost a lot of money in that place. Yeah, yeah. You, th this was a massive, like, model slash comic store. Huge. The best comics, man. Massive. And they did a lot of uh, comedy there as well. Um, oh, yeah, right A, a lot of uh, big um, Hollywood names uh, came out from just that grassroots comedy store that they had there. It's amazing. Why, yeah. did, it, why did it shut? Um, he'd been doing it for 15 years, and he said the time had come where he he just had enough. He's doing other business ventures. We actually had a, a music manager come in here uh, the other day, and he his, he knows the owner, and he was telling us that the guy's still doing stuff, but he's just he was over it yeah. with the, the whole comic thing. Yeah, I can imagine. So, I mean, there's a it's lot... tough times. It is, yeah, it's tough times. Bricks and mortars hard and selling, you know, paper to nerds is... <laughs> it's all gone online, yes, man. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get nerds to leave the house to do anything now is... Uh, yeah, it was true. always difficult. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But then there is a sort of revenge of the nerds going on because, they're, yes. because they are completely... In control it's of the tech. World now. Yeah, it's, it's tech. Yeah. It's a tech generation. It's. Uh, I mean, I think that that's an, that the issue we're having with with masculinity as well is we are reconfiguring what it means to be masculine through, you know, we've gone from sort of. Uh, soccer and, and American football and that, now there is but the these soccer and football guys go and watch Lord of the Rings you know so it's yeah. it's going back to the whole if everyone liked pop music the world would suck it's like if everyone was a, a bro the, then that would suck too yeah. so you need we need the nerds for all the fun shit that we like to you know play around with in our hands every day and, and we need to be entertained Doozers and, 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 and do. Fraggles isn't it it's, I don't know what what is that Doozers and Fraggles from Fraggle Rock oh you know? god Fraggle Rock the, the yeah. Doozers would be doing the do and the Fraggles would be I used have fraggle rock curtains yeah i used to have wallpaper nice yeah we are really showing our we're age we're really generous yeah yeah we're really showing us off so warhammer what, what else um may, oh cycling uh, uh just to mm. keep the because i sit here all the you know i was in the yeah, studio yeah. just just sitting all the time and in, in at least in london i was a pedestrian you know walking mm. to the bus i mean it, this is so this is how affluent we are as a country 
we are worried about being too fat. That is that is problem number yeah. one in America. Isn't that hilarious? And it's a real first world problem as well. Yeah, isn't it? You know. we are the we have the fattest poor people on earth here. Figure that one out. That's a really good <laughs> point. How the fuck does that work? <laughs> yeah, crap food. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, and driving everywhere. I always relate f- the food industry to the music industry. You know, yep. you've got options of choosing what you want to eat, like you have to listen. There's McDonald's and then there's Umami Burger. It's still a burger, but there is a definite difference between yeah. the two. Yeah. Or in and out because in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> I had an Astro Burger the other day. Oh, classic. As an entry. Yeah, as an entry. Um, so um, three days a week is your yeah. average batting yeah. for... Everyone out there is going to think I'm a complete idiot uh, for three days a week, work, work week. But honestly... I would just produce shit if I was working in here every day at the moment. <clears throat> yeah. If it was, if it was run-of-the-mill stuff where uh, it didn't involve original thought and it was like editing, mixing, things like that, yeah. I could do that twenty-four-seven, no problem. But yeah. it's making new music for artists and trying to understand what they want and how to package that and all those kind of thoughts. I can't do that every day. Mm, yeah, because it takes a lot of energy. It does, out. especially. Especially when it's not your product, it's someone else's. I'm the opposite, actually. Really? Yeah, I find it easier to do other people's. You know, like how giving advice and you're like, you're like a genius at helping other people yeah. out, but you suck at helping yourself do out. What I say, not what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm more in that, that, that camp. But yeah. I understand the other, the other side of it, too. Well, let's backtrack. Yes. Because we've got history. Okay. And you, you've toured. You've, you've put out a surprising amount of albums of your own. Yes. And still do. Yes, I've got a bunch of shit coming up. <clears throat> and we toured. Yes. You're a lot awesome of fun. Awesome live. Yeah, yeah. It was, wasn't As it? were you. It was good fun, wasn't it? It was um, epic. It was great. And it, I think that was a, a seminal moment. I, th- yeah. I, I remember being on road with you and um, especially, I mean, there was a few room twos. They quickly disbanded. By the time we hit, what was it? What were we in London? Was it Coco? Coco, yeah. yeah. By the time we hit there, it was, li- it was lively, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was busy and yes. it just felt like. It was a very, very interesting time in my life. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't really feel. I, it's so sad that you, you can't comprehend it fully at the time. Mm. I mean, I was like, yeah, this is great. Um, but there was just so many other things going on. I didn't. I, I wish I could have just had a second to marinate in in what was happening. Uh, mm. But it was, it was very enjoyable. Yeah, I think a lot of people, uh, me myself especially, you know, you go through these little li- um, times like lives in mini lives. Yes. Absolutely. And they're, de- they're, they're decorated with all different kind of trials and life things and emotional stuff. And, you know, if you could just remove one of those emotions and just it would have opened so many, unlocked so many yeah. positive vibes in, in other areas, wouldn't it? Yeah. When it was going on at the time. Yeah, it was great, though. Um, yeah. It was, I think I was thrust into a very strange place. I mean, it was you care for what you wish for, definitely for me. Mm. Um, I, you know, I was one minute I was working in, in retail in Croydon after dropping out of university and selling jeans to people in Croydon, mm. and then I was, you know, playing to as we used to two thousand people mm. in London, and, and none of these kids knew about me a year ago, yeah. and and I wasn't happy. It was weird. You'd think that that would make me happy. No but satisfaction in, in. I didn't feel I'd earned it. I feel like I'd only been making music for a couple of years beforehand. I didn't particularly enjoy the process of... I loved making the album with Stuart Price. He's an absolute sweetheart. But the the business... And I didn't like the people around me. I didn't trust the people around me either. And I was right to because I ended up in a lot of shit with a couple of them um, right, afterwards. Right. But, and that happens all the time. The, the, the industry is full of taking advantage of people's ambition mm. and people's want to be either famous or successful in, in this particular field. And I was I was semi blinded by the lights, definitely. And uh, but it's fine. This happens, and I survived. Mm, um, yeah. It wasn't like I was a rape survivor, so it's, it wasn't <laughs> that bad. But, no, no. Yeah, there's plenty of music stories where that's concerned as well. So oh, I won't get into that. No, we can't. We can't. <laughs> um, you you went to uh, college just down the road from where I grew up. Oh, yeah. Hospital, oh, right? sorry. I'm thinking American college, university, yeah. high school. Uh, right, okay, so high school. Yeah. yeah, 11 to 18. Yeah, yes. So, so, yeah, Christ Hospital That's in the one. Sussex. Yeah. Um, and then I, listen, I, I remember a di- very distinctive time, right? It's all, it's all, it's all sepia. But, but, yep. but we, I was outside Club 333 mm-hmm. on Old Street, and you came up to me very young. Yes. And you're like, you're Killer Keller. Yeah. And I was like, 
Yeah, who are you? And you uh, no one yet. <laughs> no, but he was like, I, I can't remember what your, your name. Mr. Mouth. Mr. Mouth. And yeah. you're like, I beatbox. I beatbox. And you showed me some beatboxing. Right. And you're like, we should hang. I was like, yeah, all right, kid. All right, kid. Yeah. You know, I couldn't, because it was so like, you were so like confident with it and you did it and it was really good. I was like, okay. Yeah. That's one to remember. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You were really fucking tough at it. I, I look back at those years in Old Street in East London and um, I I don't know how, I wouldn't do it now. I wouldn't be that, ambi- I wouldn't get on those night buses now. I wouldn't, I, do, I just I don't know who that person is anymore. Like being that like pumped to be doing shit. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting older. You, no, you would, t- no, but I think that it, 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 from that to being on road and mm. your music, being out there, it was a different kind of pumped. Yes. Do you know what I mean? There's Hungry Tiger pumped. Yes, that was me at the beginning. Yeah, that and was, then there's yeah. the um, focused, right, um, calculative pumped that I think came from the whole frame. I do miss the blind ambition thing. I mean, I look at other people with it, and I and it, and it str- uh, reeks of desperation. And I and I always worried that I I, I came across as sort of wild-eyed, desperate in in my early years. But at the same time, it's like. I come from fucking Croydon. If I got to make something happen, mm. there ain't nothing happening in Croydon that I care about. So yeah. wherever I went, it was like, "Hi, if you don't know me, you you better fucking mm-hmm. know about me when I leave." And I look back on that now with slight embarrassment, but at the same time, it it opened a couple of doors. It probably closed many more that I'm very unaware of. And um, people are like, "Keep this motherfucker away from me." But I look, I, you know, I, this is where I like to be. I like to be in the studio. I like to be away from people as often as possible now yeah. I'm, I'm not a people person it's funny because with <clears throat> when my agent said uh, you know mentioned you wanting tour support and yeah and and i was like yeah man like this frank music guy sure i had, i didn't know that a single bit of connectivity yep. with why um I, I was not i wasn't i don't think i was requested so much it was just on open and you you had obviously seen that I was yeah up for it and i didn't understand why i was like but then all of a sudden, it, when I, as soon as I met you, it dawned on me. I was like, "That's the kid. Yeah, that's the boy. Th- and yeah. he's a beatboxer, but he's doing this. This yeah. is awesome." So, the, like you're saying, that the attack in which you went yeah. when you was younger, it obviously paid off. Like I remembered you, and 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 to see because n- your music, it m- it transcended. It was almost like it was as much celebrated in fashion. And the, the arts, as it was, I think that was because I was I had a, I, I was going to gay clubs all the time. Not I'm, I'm not gay myself, but mm. um, I'd only go to gay clubs. Now, yeah, you and I know how fucking rough some of those hip hop clubs were. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I know that we in England we don't we don't have guns like we do out here and stuff, where it's like real talk leads to real bullets. But <laughs> yeah. it, it, you, you could still get fucking knifed or whatever. And some of those clubs that we that I I, I I'm, you were very well respected in, in in the field but i was this i never looked like a fucking idiot i mean i i was dressed i mean i was wearing like a bathing ape t-shirt with spiky hair and silly fucking plastic glasses and um in these fucking uk hip-hop venues where it was all like um kalashnikov and and the, the kids <laughs> yeah. like they even had their little like hoodie uniforms and stuff and there, there was like a fucking thing to it and then you had I just had people like this in my face. Like, you're fucking shit, mate. And like, while you're trying to do a, a beatbox battle, and it's like, and I, I, it gives me literally oh, yeah. post-traumatic. So it's like, like not real, but like, like, how fucking <laughs> insane was I back then? How Rolling. blind? Yeah, I'm like, I'm right. doing this, and, and I will stay here till four o'clock in the morning, and we'll fucking <laughs> figure it out until I get second, and I'm still happy. <laughs> it's I, just insane. I know, I know what you're saying, <laughs> but you know, in. J- jumping forward to there with that that same attitude jumping forward to now it's yeah. like we learn we realize now that that is the that's the mindset you have to have the fact you had it in in the early days that kind of all or nothing i'm doing this okay well let's figure it out if it doesn't if it doesn't we'll just you know yeah re- reconfigure like that's the new trend you have to be good at many things. Yeah. And, and I think the thing is, for the last uh, 30 years, we've been lied to by many establishment people from business to the arts um, and entertainment uh, that all you're hearing about is success stories. And every, you're never hearing about the failure. And failure is completely and utterly scorned upon. Mm. In the age of the internet, and uh, we get to see people doing startups that fail on epic levels to yeah. minute levels, uh, failure is where you're doing most of your learning 
And the thing is, everything is quantified. I mean, I keep all my, my gold discs under the, 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 the table. I don't give a shit <laughs> because that, that is... Success in that respect is what most people think, think success is in the real world. But mm. success is, I, I'm, I'm alive and I managed to get here without too many drugs in my system and too much booze and cigarettes. And I'm not dead. <laughs> like successful people like Amy Winehouse, yeah. like who was fucking <laughs> successful. But mm. that success led to her death. Yeah. So what, what does that really mean? So with me, I'm, I'm just happy 10 years down the line, well, actually more like 12, um, I'm learning about what success really is, and a majority of it is learning from failure. Mm. Being good at, I think I'm. Look, I'm not the best singer. I'm not the best producer. I'm definitely not the best beatboxer anymore. Uh, never was. And um, there's many other things I'm not good at. But it's it's like with you, the culmination of the decision making that you go through, yeah. the the choices that you've made, the style that you have. These 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 things, these little sort of columns, create a good foundation for what your creative output is. Hyper specializing yeah. in in the arts is pointless, in my opinion. If like you're just a mixing engineer, you're not going to have a career. If you're no. just a guy that does vocal production, you're not going to have a career. People want to be able to come in the room, give you a grand, and be like, "How much can you do for that grand?" You know, yeah. whatever. And that's sure. that's what you're. And you go, "I can do all of this for that." It's it's almost like you're being paid for a day rate. Right? Yeah, it is, isn't it? I'm so, there. Yeah. I'm there for the day, yeah. and I can. Yeah. When when you realize that that plumbers are getting paid more money most, than most music producers, that's when you really have to start fucking <laughs> figuring out what you're doing with your life. It, and that is so true. Sparkies yeah. as well. Included. Absolutely. It's like such a it's a necessity, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Um, and I don't think there's many excuses for someone to not be multitasked or, you know, technology. You know, we're using a phone here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yep. like. Does that make me a camera operator? No. Yeah, well, no. But yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It is now. Yes. But, but, and that's the thing, isn't it? Was um, it the act of you actually just coming out to LA and, and, and doing this? I think there's that to it as well. Mm. It's, uh, you, you could be in the, your home country, wherever that may be, and uh, not doing that. You're taking risks. This is the thing is, risk-taking is what made America in the first place. There's a bunch of people with you know blind ambition mm -hmm. going out there and doing stuff. The thing is, we're, we're very much in our... In, in the, the age of the internet, it's very easy to just fall into your own clay, fall into your comfort zone, mm. whether it be um, politically or arts-wise or anything. And the, 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 the most important thing comes from getting out there, yeah. shaking your dick <coughs> and doing something. Because they yeah. love that. America loves that. I think the UK does too, but they can't admit it to themselves. Yeah. Because they, they, we all want to be entertained, but we like to think that we're above being entertained in the UK. Yeah, it's true. But we all fucking love X Factor. Come on. Yeah, yeah. We love yeah. the car crash. Yeah, deep that, yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We created the thing, you know what I mean? Yep. Of course. Yeah. Um, so, with your backseat approach now, of yes. not like being on the stage, do you miss it? No. No, at all. No, I used to have a lot of panic, panic attacks um, uh, before I went on stage, uh, dry heaving and stuff like that. And it kind of came, I, I chest cramps. Through my 20s, I, had, I, I, I sometimes had ambulances come out to me while I was on tour really? because I thought I was having a heart attack. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's, which is weird because I, I went to drama school. I, I went to sort of the sort of dance school, you know, when you're like six, seven, and eight. I, I was taught stage, mm. uh, stagecraft. And uh, I think I just wasn't psychologically prepared for for a major record deal. I didn't come from that world. Like if, it was, if I was Taylor Swift where I grew up around success and fortune and, and you, you, know, you have parents who keep you on the straight and narrow, highly communicative with you about what you're doing. I, I was from a council estate who was lucky enough to get into a good school, but this was a whole fucking <coughs> foreign thing mm -hmm. to me. I, I, I'm from Croydon, Thornton Heath, and now I'm doing this. And it, it, even though I wanted it, I didn't understand it. You know, that's careful what you wish for. So mm -hmm. it's like, I want to be the guy on stage and everyone's screaming at me. I'm up there. I'm having a fucking panic attack. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the balance yeah. is off. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> and in terms of production, like, I know you're, you're understanding yourself there when you talk about, like, you know, I'm not the blah, 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 but I do this, you know. Yeah. Um, it's great. And you work with lots of people. You I think that's how I keep, keep sane. Yeah. I, I, back in the day, you know, I would like to work with, do a little bit of Frank music and then a little bit of, stuff for other people you know and that that was my sort of yin and yang i, you, I think they you, help each other you <clears throat> yeah i'll come to this now because now I'm, I'm treading i'm treading the eggshells because i'm not sure this is actual fact but i've heard mutual friends mm. explain to me your role in a, a lot of people's careers a couple uh, breaking and bringing them to the attention of people mm. do you know what I mean like you've you've helped garner people's careers in a sense 
I think that the, what I what I like to see myself as is a proverbial stepping stone for people, and uh, not not in a sort of uh, uh, they're stepping on my head, but I I pref- and I've said this to I've gone into publishing companies, I've gone into you know me- meetings with people like Disney and stuff. Give me the unknown. I don't want the established. Mm-hmm. I mean, most everyone's dying for the Beyonce cut out here. Everyone's dying for the next Drake cut. Everyone wants the big yeah. the big cut, yeah. and I get that. Everyone wants to get paid. I. I fucking totally feel you on that. It doesn't reward me, though. I would rather work with the unknown and see that blossom. Yeah, that's, that's exciting. Awesome. That's, yeah. I, that's what I need. I don't need money. I can live out here fine with on the money that I earn. That's, a, that's what I, I like to say to people now. It's like, imagine you had all the money you needed tomorrow, right? Mm. You got your house paid for. You got your car payment done. What are you doing then? Mm. If you, if, what are you working for? So, yeah. so I don't think about having a million dollars because I've, I've had fucking loads of money and lost it all in the past and that didn't make me fucking happy. I was Mm-mm. raging alcoholic miserable. So what makes me happy? Seeing people succeed and knowing that I mm. was part of it. Not making a load of money. That's nicer that happens too. But don't want to get taken advantage of either. There's that. Don't yeah. be so fucking charitable that you get mugged off. Yeah. But Which can happen when there's a hungry... Absolutely. Artist. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So there, there's a balance with all this. Mm. You know? Yeah. I must admit, when it comes to the podcast stuff, uh, you know, yeah. I love to like interview all sorts of walks of life and all sorts of like age groups. Awesome. And the young guns, they 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 bring a whole different energy. To Absolutely. It, don't they? You know, and I think that feeds that feeds me, man. I like, yeah. I get inspired by. It's good to remember. If, yeah, man. I yeah. Love that. Do you, do you watch Joe Rogan or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Check him out. Check him out. Um, and. Yeah, he's he's he pulls off some inspiration, you know, and it's that's a good thing because he brings like different people to the table as well. Yeah, well, you 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 kind of remind me of him in terms of you're not you're you're walking through with me rather than it being a sort of an inquisition or you know because I can't and I I I look forward to the music music journalists but journalism dying off actually Mm. entirely (laughs) uh, because. Not just because I've had some real shitty reviews from people in the past. You know who you are. Um, it's <laughs> it's it's more. I I think that this is more helpful. Mm. Musicians interviewing musicians. Like you fucking know. That's why I hate the music industry because it's run by people who aren't musicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I I get they need to dot the i's and cross the t's and and look through contract law, but I always wished that we were going back to sort of the eighties, seventies, and eighties where A and R men. Yeah. They were interested in the act not just the bottom line and yeah. it's very sort of like blue sky uh, uh, sort of rose tinted glasses blah 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 but there's some truth to that mm. you know i mean getting back to the thing you said at the beginning there's a reason why you hate pop music mm. because it stands for all the things that you're probably against you yeah. know when it comes to the music not, industry yeah yeah i think i think it, i think there is a lot of that i'm again i'm not against it what i am is mm. i'm like i can't i can't ju- i can't justify like you say the industry around it well, it's it's sad when the king of pop was actually all the things that no one else is in pop, which is right. multifaceted, multi-talented. Right. I mean, I, I mean, I'm trying to rack my brain to think of, but he he, I can't think of anything. He he wrote, he produced, he understood the fucking business as yeah. well. I mean, he was very shrewd. Yeah. So but we yeah. haven't had a multifaceted, multi. Uh-uh. Uh, I mean, I don't care. I mean, I I do care, but um, all the other shit that happened with him is irrelevant in terms of him in as being a cog in this business, yeah. no, no one's come close. No one's come close. And I feel that. And that's what's weird, isn't it? You'd think... Um, and by the way, thanks very much for the, uh, you know, the, the shout on that. Like, you know, have, being an artist myself. Yeah, I'm, absolutely. You know, um, walking you through it because um, that's something I take pride in because I'm able to... I can relate to that. I can, you know, when, you, when you've lived it yourself, you know, so it makes it a lot easier. Um, and one thing that... Um, you we were, we were observant to is the the lack of you think with like michael jackson okay there's the marker you've got to be better than that you've got to be as good as that you've got to be i like that I mean? yeah i didn't um, even think of it like that but i i'm like i look at michael jackson, I'm like no one's ever gonna be as good yeah. as that. <laughs> but but where are where where does it go from michael jackson and back you know i mean you know freddie mercury yep. prince they've all gone now and it's almost like people are taking advantage of the fact that they're gone and being weaker, mm. not challenging themselves and being better. Maybe, yeah. I, I think that there is, uh, I, I think it, there's so many aspects to it. I think cultures change, I think societies change, I think the democratization of the internet has changed things a lot mm. as well. Um, you don't, it's hard to be iconic when there isn't the sort of these uh, faucets that we've had before where it's like getting to be that guy. Mm. 
anyone can be that guy now, weirdly. So it's like, there could be a Michael Jackson out there, but because there isn't just... It's hard to explain, but anyone can be famous, anyone can be talented, and anyone can be successful, but the thing that made the sort of the Michael Jacksons and the Princes, there was a, a limitation on how many people could reach that point, just because of the infrastructure in place. There was, you know, there's only one right. record label, there's only one marketing yeah. company, or like three or four major record labels yeah. you could go to. Yeah. Now you can just put some shit on the internet and see what happens. There isn't that finessing. There isn't that, uh, you don't need, there isn't that need, sorry, there we go. There isn't that need to try as hard. No. Because the public don't, they, they, I can just be entertained over here. I don't need to wait five years for th- for Moonwater Thriller or whatever. Yeah, there's, you know? there, there is no incubation, is there? I don't think there's the money either. No. There, there isn't There isn't the, the, the mm. scope or vision. And also, I'm sorry, talking about youngsters, I mean, I agree that, that youngsters are great. But the maintenance of these youngsters is that these the, a lot of the people that we like were old men. They weren't. They, they, I mean, they, they, Michael Jackson started as a child, but he went through. I mean, yeah. this still happens in Hollywood. You still have youngsters maintaining, like uh, who's the Blade Runner guy? Uh, the, not Harrison, the new one, Christina. Oh, dude from Drive. What's his name? The new Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Thank you. Yeah, so Ryan Gosling. You know, he, we don't have that in the music industry. Okay, we've got, like, just, Justin Bieber, maybe, just, but, like... Yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, you, you've only got the Disney kids now. Mm. And, and it's, like, you, you know, the Selena Gomez and that and the other. So, yeah. I don't know. It's I think that even, even if we had a Michael Jackson, we're so saturated we wouldn't even know it now. Yeah, that's true. Uh, ages, that's an interesting thing. I looked online. I mean, I know, what was it, Sting? Was yeah. like, 35 when the first Police album There you came. go. <clears throat> and Blondie was like 37 when she broke. Yeah. You know, these different are, time. Different time. Yeah. Um, do you think? Do you think there's that? Do you think there's that? Um, uh, what's the word? You judge for being older? No, I think the industry doesn't care about old people. So I think that the we are obsessed with youth and that's fine um i th- think that, that we have an unhealthy obsession with 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 uh, the 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 young um due to their sort mm. of parents disposal income not wanting to let their child down um, yeah. whereas music there was a there was a cut off there was a a cut off for music before where if you couldn't afford an lp you couldn't afford an lp mm. and if you could afford an lp you couldn't afford the fucking record player mm, 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 mm. you know so there was there was a back in the 70s and 80s before cassette tapes you know betamax and stuff there was not betamax uh, the 8 track sorry yes, you know there there was um you had to invest to be a fan of music yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no investment anymore so right. they're like well we just need the kids and adults we don't really care about. I found out that the most listened to genre of music on Spotify, you think it'd be like EDM or something, is yeah. rock music. So there's still a third. You think like Spotify, like the cool, trendy, like, you know, it's mm. this, this that European... Rock, so rock music is the most... Yeah. No way. So and there's, there's this... There is obviously this thirst for, you know, because it's not played on radio anymore. No. And I, I still, like, I hear Red Hot Chili Peppers come on the radio now. I'm like, fuck, that's really? oh, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, pretty yeah. good, actually. I heard Nothing Else Matters the other day going <laughs> yeah. in the car. I was like, really? What? Like... Two in the afternoon. Awesome. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. I, I'm with you there because w- with the disposable income of the parents, and also there is that f- factor to consider when, uh, if you're a singer songwriter and you are using your, your pop's cash or your mum's cash or whatnot, the risk, the danger's gone. Like, I'm not an Oasis fan, right? But I can appreciate their circumstances and how they came up. Absolutely. And, and they made amazing tunes. You know, yeah. they made great. It was iconic for yeah, our country. For that time, yeah. And I gotta hand it to a man, like they made they same as Sex Pistols, they made it aggressive, attack, attack, don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know? And there's none of that in music no more. Um th- that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't even think of it like that. Um well I think in America, I mean well for a start I I mean it's in rock bands. I'm, uh, yeah, that's that's fine, yeah. yeah. So it in rock music, I know fucking nothing about rock music. I mean, I like electric light orchestras yeah, yeah. as far as my, my rock chops oh, I go. saw that. Yeah, I saw the, the yeah, no. OG. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, I, if you, you, in the UK, you have things like drill, grime. Mm. The, the, this, the, it's so working class. It's so aggressive. Yes, it's, yeah. But they're not making it to please people. To get over the they, 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 they don't want the attention of, of, mm. of fans. They, they, they're trying to literally, they're, they're, I'm making a song about you, mate, 
round the corner and the next time I see you, mm. can knife in the mm. neck, mate. And this is a song about how I'm going to do it and how long it's going to take and, with, and who's going to be watching. That's not translating yeah. to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, so, but, and in America, you, you, you still have like Trap. Trap's probably as, as dark as it gets out here while still being able to be commercially viable. Yeah. Um, and Trap got taken over by white kids with laptops in like five seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it like became the new dubstep. And, you know, it's, and then Katy Perry did that um, Dark Horse song and, and ruined it. it for <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sayonara. <laughs> yeah, like, there, there goes that genre. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you think that uh, there is still life in the working class to create uh, a more uh, commercial friendly? I'm going to say something that is, is slightly. Um, not that that spicy, but I think the problem is the the political landscape we're in. It's the establishment. So, but, right, okay. So I, I'm going to try and I haven't vocal vocalized these 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 thoughts before. So I'll try and Excellent. get it right. So I right, so this happens. So in America, we're in America, and so 20 years ago, uh, the right wing was sort of the Bible thumping. Like you, you have it in your head, it's sort of like the either the the white trash, you know, in caravans in mm. the you know Alabama, like yip, 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 and the, or their uh, or their their blue collar and they're conservative and they go to church and they got their blonde daughters and the guns yeah. and the, the the truck. That's not it anymore. And on the left, the, the left used to resist this. They used to rebel against that idea. And in the UK, it would be like Tory scum and all this, right? Yeah, so, okay. But now the left runs the media yeah the political left so and it's like so the the anti-establishment they did become the establishment that's okay mm. i don't i don't care that they're in in control of i mean we're in hollywood it's yeah. run by the left there's no conservatives here no that's right so there's no resistance what are you resisting against it's like it's like yeah. oasis now i mean you were talking about the, the, in itself isn't it they they're rich they're they're wealthy now yeah. so who are they saying fuck you to it's, and it's and this is imagine like the Oasis people times a thousand. Yeah. There's a thousand people running this entertainment industry. It's probably it's the actual number is probably close to about five thousand people in the whole entire world who are controlling the the Western entertainment industry, and that's fine. It's not like some info war stuff. That's just a rough guess. Mm -hmm. And so, but and sort of they're all politically. In, in attuned to each other. Mm -hmm. That's okay, but don't expect there to be any. Resistance and yeah. when and when if you yeah. look at the UK the BBC and stuff it's it's very sort of centre left and that's okay it's just when because they're the sort of the warm and fuzzy side of the political mm. spectrum what do you find like fuck you for being not so nice fuck you for wanting to help welfare fuck you. So, so what are you re resisting mm. so back in the day it was like fuck you Tory because you don't want me to get up mm. and then, but now everyone who's in control they're the answer, they're like, let's go let's go yeah. you can keep making like no that's and that goes back to the whole bringing up your kids and giving them a participation medal it's like yeah where's yeah, the yeah, fuck yeah, culture yeah. gone now you know so i don't care that they're running the the, the the entertainment industry it's like but don't expect there to be any resistance wow i've not you've opened my ideas to things that i hadn't even thought of it like that i'm reading books on it so <laughs> yeah no completely it, fucking um, wrong no but it's an it's no but it's a conversation isn't it and when yeah there, there's just there's there's either like you say the drill and the grime where it's like we ain't getting our piece and our ones it's not a fuck you though is it no they're, they're eating each other yeah so the, they, they, there is there's no concern for commercial viability and the and it, it almost it goes it's a purity spiral so it's like oh you do want to make money then fuck <laughs> you for trying mm. to make money. And that, we remember that even back in the day we were just trying to get a record deal. But now it's trying to get 10 hits on SoundCloud <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. And, and Very and, weird. And American <clears throat> rap's never really had that problem. There's always been a celebration of like, you know, and I'm sure that's pretty much the same with uh, the think, more mumble think, rap stuff I as well. I think because African Americans and whites are much more interwoven than sort of the much more recent 1950s uh, mm. West West Indian yeah. immigration to the the UK was a Caucasian country for a very long period of time. The birth of America started mm. with two races from the beginning, mm -hmm. pretty much, or mm -hmm. three, but you know, whatever. They so there is that. Mm. I think that the, the, uh, hip hop makes more sense here because there is that history. <laughs>
That's so funny. I had the metronome on the whole time. I'm just going to turn the metronome off. I thought I could hear that. <laughs> so we can time sync this afterwards. Yeah. Um, Amazing. So <laughs> we, we got all we got all the stuff here. Yeah, we got it all. No, so just put a beat behind it. We're good. Uh, the most interesting SoundCloud ever. Um, yeah. No, so the with genres, I've always been against genres. That's why I like working with Tinchy Strider because he wanted to work with me. He mm. found out about me. I don't know where from, but mm. I was like, oh, this this fella. He's from, you know, pop grime, mm. but he wants to work with some weirdo who hangs out in gay clubs. That's interesting. That's awesome. And that's a mind thing. Yeah. I didn't even hear his music before. I, I was like, I, I know I want to work with mm. you because you're open yeah. to things. Yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't matter what you're open to. It's the, the, the moment you do that, I'm, I'm going to be interested. Yeah. And he's a nice guy as well. Oh, my God. Like, he's so fucking nice. Yeah, he's a dude. Yeah, I like him. Um, who else are you Very with? humble. Uh, recently, uh, there's this uh, new new lady called Daisy Gutridge who I'm working with. I'll play some stuff off camera uh, afterwards. Yeah, wicked. And um, she's from the UK, and uh, she came in for a writing session with a different artist, but we ended up wanting to work with her. And I, and that's once again, it's like she hasn't got a lot of her own material out there. I'm like, let me help. I, I want to help craft you yeah, yeah like i don't want you already fully realized to come in and tell me what you want i want you to let me interpret what i think you should be that's awesome yeah so there's that and um i've i've, I've started like four different projects of my own i'm, I'm finally doing these it's like, it's like frank music versus i have to bring you in on, on one of the tracks so it's basically i like to make music outside of my frank music genre as <laughs> yeah. it were where I'm, I'm known for a very specific thing even though my albums do sort of genre wise they do go yeah, all do. over the place and you've had some wicked remixes by the way yeah there's been some good ones banging remixes yeah thank you and uh i i i'm doing these four projects where it's like an ambient project a lo-fi hip-hop project a house project a two-step garage project because i fucking love two-step <laughs> and so i'm doing but i'm still keeping it under the frank music umbrella but it's like frank music featuring my new fake artist name Awesome. Just to keep, because I was being, we've been trying to figure out how we it's a Quasimodo. Yeah, I just trying. I fucking Beep. love that rapper. I just trying <laughs> to figure out how to do it, uh, and it's, it's a lot of fucking Jeep. work. Um, but they're just going to be EPs for now, and then we'll see how they go. That's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, Ooh. and it's bring. I'm bringing in loads of people to feature on it because I'm not really going to be singing on much of it. So oh, we'll have a there go go. on that. Yeah, there we'll we go. Have a go on that. Doing, doing business here doing business. on the podcast. Yeah, well, getting the job done. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, um, Daniel Lismore. Yes, M well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. He's he's a nice guy, and he. I, I mean, I've you've very done, nice. You've done a lot of fashion stuff, like associated, yep. and like you say, the, a lot of the, the gay gay club life. Yeah. Um, do you do you dabble in a, in in fashion? I used yourself? to. Yeah. I I mainly do the sort of Steve Jobs, just wear black now. Um, well, not today, but um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was seeing you. It's so a I special thought, day. Thought I'd make an effort. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, but no, I I, I cared more when I. I think that I cared more about my creative output as me as an individual. So, because I, 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 you know, generally an artist isn't just a sort of a music re musical representation uh, of a thing. They're also a meme for fashion and you know things like that. Totally. Yeah. But so, we also grew <clears> up <throat> on that as well, didn't we? we yeah. Think absolutely. About it, like Madonna and uh, like yeah. sort of you know they all kind of like dabbled in it, didn't they? Yeah. And uh, David Bowie and totally. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I think that, that sadly, uh, it's not sadly, but I think. As I go, go so with the internet now, it's what am I going to be today? Google search. Mm. What am I going to wear today? Google search. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to. I was saying to my my partner last night. Do you remember the fucking <laughs> genuine excitement of a magazine co subscription coming in through your door? Oh my god! Yeah, it's like oh, yeah. like just taking off that cell phone. Like, like it came nah, from another no, planet. Yeah, it never fucking happens. Yeah, you just no. go on this fucking thing, yeah. and it's all figured out. Yeah, I forgot that thing. <clears> yeah, it's true. Genuine joy. Yeah, yeah. That it's like a newborn baby. For the you're like, oh my god, what yeah, what yeah. am I going to learn about my subculture of interest yeah. th th right now? You know, that, that, so all these little waiting is a thing that doesn't exist anymore. You don't have to wait for anything. And that goes back to the whole 37-year-old pop star thing. Mm. It's a, we're, we're told we don't have to wait anymore. And I mm. think that the, the, some of the biggest successes that people can make, or the, sorry, the most successful people I think I've been reading a lot about this is um, pushing back instant gratification. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you can't do that, you're much like, less likely to be successful in life. Mm -hmm. If you're like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just get drunk right now. Well, then you're not going to fucking wake up tomorrow and you're not going to be... Ready as you should be. Yeah, and mm. so the, the whole just fucking maintaining. Mm. That's why we're still here. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm not driving to Bentley, but I'm still fucking here. Yeah. 
you know, so it's, and I know where I'd be if I was just mm. wham, bam, gimme, 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 mm. you know, like I was, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, actually, yeah, cause, uh, Lenny from Motorhead, yeah, I'm a big fan of his, and, and yeah, he said something on a, yeah, RP for sure, and he, he said something in an interview once, um, they're like, uh, it, the, the, the interview goes, you know, what keeps you going? You know, why, why haven't you stopped? And he's like, well, I just haven't given up. It's like, yeah. why should you? You yeah. know, it's, it's, I'm not going to go away just because your interest in me's yes, disappeared. It's absolutely. like I have still wake up in the morning and have a reality that, okay, I, I may not make the ace of spades every week, yeah. but I certainly, like, I have to keep creating and doing what I'm doing, you know? Yeah, well, you know what happens if you stop? Fuck all. Oh, yeah, right. exactly. But I think, as, I, th I think for um, cats our age, you know, the, the 25s and unders, we, um, we really do grab uh, technology in a very different way. Yeah. I think so. In what way? Well, we've been through the mill of different uh, versions of the music industry. Right. And now all of a sudden, um, with a more disciplined head, yep. you can grab a camera and take the shot yep. with the appreciation knowing of what you'd have to go on and how much you've had to have paid at a certain time. That's an that interesting time. point. Yeah, I never thought of that. The, the, the sort of... Um, it, it kind of goes back to uh, this, this guy I heard the other day, and he said, you know, uh, someone from 80 years... We're, we're, we, you and I right now, are richer than the wealthiest people from 80 years ago. You know, the, 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 the wealth that we have, the mm -hmm. fact that we can access the world mm. from our hands. Yeah, totally. You know, these, these things that we... It's so annoying how humans so quickly adjust sometimes. It's yeah. amazing, the thing With as well. complacency. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, I can't just turn the light on. And then you have a power cut, and you're like, holy shit, I'm useless. Yeah, yeah. I'm so fucking useless. The internet, the internet, it's off, it's, yeah. off. it's not working. How do I internet? You yeah. know, it's, it's so... There, there is this instant gratification thing from Instagram. We, we're learning now that these multimedia companies are engineering these applications to be constantly fucking with our heads in mm. terms of how to... I mean, Facebook came straight out and said we've been adjusting people's feeds to create an emotional reaction. Yeah. And, and so we are, we are allowing ourselves... We think we're in control. We're not. We, we'd like to think we're right, in control. Right, we were yeah. on Instagram trying to get those endorphin hits, you know, like, yeah. oh, someone liked me. Oh, validation, validation, validation. Yeah. I just hope that the kids that are growing up, um, because they didn't know anything else, and they, they've only gone in knowing the world on this playing field, mm -hmm. it isn't going to mess their heads up because they're not coming from anything else. Yeah. And may, and may, but maybe the, the brain chemistry is that at least they, they're not coming from something else to f*** their heads up. Mm. Because, I, I mean, I know like our generation, I think that the reason why millennials struggle so much, I fucking hate that word, um, <laughs> is, is because we remember a world before this yeah. and and it's, so I think that we we're having a harder time. I think Generation Z are going to come out better than than we did on, on that so. stuff. Yeah, because I was, I was, as you were saying that, I thought to myself, I wonder if our parents, you know, back at then were having the same call for concern as maybe not to this technological, mm. you know, intensity, but there were new things coming out, and I bet you they had the conversation as well, like. These kids, this generation, man, they're fucked up. <laughs> this this whole MTV thing. Oh yeah, it's, no, yeah, no, that, that did I'm happen. Sure, yeah. I'm I mean, sure. in, in conservative America, they they were trying to ban videos. Ban and, it. You know, and Clockwork Orange was banned in the UK for like. And the parental five advisory years. sticker and all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've forgotten. In PRS, is it? I know. Um, I've forgotten the name of the. No idea, but I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. No, it's. Uh, I think the the thing is, the last 100 years in Europe have been. It, it, it's kind of a bad bookmark for us because the beginning of the last century was completely marred in war. Mm. And um, I think that, you know, I, I look at uh, my family and my grandfather was in D-Day and uh, he was a, 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 an engineer and my, my grandmother was in the Admiralty. Wow. And then I got to watch three generations um, sort of devolve. Mm. So I got to watch the discipline and the, this goes back to the thing that we said at the very beginning about the fuck you culture. You want to talk about fuck you? How about have a fucking war? Yeah. And these people <laughs> are so disciplined. Like my mother, or my grandfather and my grandmother were so fucking disciplined mm -hmm. and so down the line. And they brought up my mother like against all odds. They survived bombs yeah. dropping at the top of my road that I grew up on. And they didn't talk about it. They didn't fucking whine. They're not on Twitter fucking whining about dumb shit. That's just mad, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and then you have the baby boomers who... They didn't have a war to validate their existence. And then so they, they, they you know, in America and the UK, they had like, and, and I think the civil rights thing, of course, totally should have happened. But it was like, we need a cause because we didn't die in a war. Mm. And so, so like then in the 60s and the, the 50s and 60s, which was only 10, 20 years after a fucking basic apocalypse, um, you, you have these, these people who like, 
I know that my parents kind of are way braver and way, way more gutsy than I am because they just did World War One and Two. So I'm going to pretend I'm super brave by like standing up for shit that doesn't matter uh, and for Vietnam and blah blah blah. And then we're like you and I, our generations, like. Well, we're not any of those things, mm. but we're just going to like do uh, some other shit. So like millennials are like, we're all just tech now. That's, so we're like, we're, we're, we don't really want war. We don't really want, you know, hippie yeah. enclave shit. And, and so now we're just tech. And then our kids, they're like, well, we don't know what the f*** we're doing. Mm. And so our mm. kids are going to be like, well, let's have a war again, maybe? Who knows? But like, mm. so I think war sucks, but war really, it sharpens the mind. Yeah. And I think people have think that they're worrying about things that really don't fucking matter sharpening of the mind is true and bringing and bringing communities together well that nothing brings anything together anymore i think that the, the the i mean it's that dead meme of like you call it social media more like anti-social mm. media it's like yeah it's dumb meme but at the same time it's very fucking true it's true you know i mean when's the last time i saw you <laughs> Well, <laughs> three years ago. Yeah, but, well, yeah, but technically, like the other week, but we weren't together. It's right? Like, yeah, there you the go. Thing, isn't yeah. it? You know? and, yeah, uh, three years ago. It's, like everything is by proxy now. Uh, oh, really? uh, admittedly, humans they do have a, a sort of a cut off point of how many people they can have genuine yeah. uh, human connections. I think it's like twenty hmm. or something really limited like that. Uh, and it's you know when I watch all these YouTubers and they're like, I love all my fans. No, you fucking don't. Liars. Yeah, it, it, and, uh, and then you're like sort of amplifying this disingenuous disconnecting of people yeah. I'm atheist but I'll, I will still enjoy going to church yeah, and it's because I, I understand religion together. helping certain people it doesn't help everyone yeah. and I understand religion has got a lot of bad <clears throat> shit to it as well but I'm, as I've got older I've definitely sort of I understand mm. the world in a sort of a bit more mm. laid way when I was a student I was like fuck the government man yeah. like fuck the police man it's like no Thank you, police. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Actually. Keeping communities. Um... Yeah, they, they're trying to... I mean, there, there's a couple... There's obviously bad eggs in everything. Mm. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's more layered. I had the same with football recently, you know. Interesting. I know nothing about football, so please no, tell me. Neither do I. I know okay. nothing. <laughs> okay. But, but if it makes them happy, if it brings people together, if it brings a, makes the world happy a bit more and they enjoy it, yep. I, I, I'm not into it, but at least everyone is singing from the same hymn book. I, th I think that to some degree, the, 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 what's happened is we, we go back to the thing that you were talking about with the, the young fans, right? The, in, the industry is only interested in a certain demographic, demographic of people, and they're leaving a lot of people out in the cold. What's happening in, in media as a whole, and we, we, you look at the World Cup and stuff as a, a unifier, mm. the media isn't interested in unifying people right now because they make more money... Um, uh, just keeping people yeah, yeah. divided, divide and, and conquer. But there's there's more there's more things holding us together, and uh, and it, and it's it's not interesting news. It's mm. not exciting to people. That's not going to satisfy your emotional need to say the other guys are fucking cunt, mm. right? I want to hear you're. A I don't want to hear you're actually a good person, and maybe we disagree on a few mm, things. Mm, 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 and mm. soccer is this sort of like that's as close as we get to war. That's a mini war. In a tribal sense. Yeah, and yeah. I think that we need, yeah. we men need violence in terms of we like we like fighting. We do, Sorry, ladies, we do. <laughs> and, and give a few drinks to some ladies and they'll fucking like fighting too. <laughs> and so I think we just need to be more honest with each other. We yeah. need to be like, and I think the, these uh, these media industries need to stop fucking <laughs> making us think that we hate each other. Mm. They need us to hate each other so they can still make advertising money. Yeah, I exactly. think we're actually yeah. we're actually much more friendlier than, than we'd like to think. Yeah, exactly. Creating the conf creating the argument. Yeah. And I think that the, the, yeah. this has been this compounding thing with the internet, which at the same time, which is allowing people not to go out and have real conversations mm. with people. Like, I don't need to go and fucking talk to you. I can just call you a cunt <laughs> on Facebook. Totally. Yeah. It's it's bound to fail. Yeah. So we need to get people not to church, but at least out of their fucking houses and off their bloody laptops for five minutes and having real conversations with people who they might disagree with. Yeah, yeah. And soccer's a great place to do that. Soccer is a good place to do that. Yeah. If, yeah. If there wasn't so much drinking involved. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, then, no, then comes this yeah, whole new thing. Yeah, no, well, I mean, the, the hooli I mean, hooliganism is so interesting to me because if you like Celtic and I'm going to get murdered for not remembering the name of the other bloody team this is Scotland uh, it's probably something really fucking obvious uh, it's Celtic and my apologies to anyone in Scotland uh, you can hear I'm a limey southern twat <laughs> doesn't know anything about your bloody football but they hate each other they fucking hate each other and they live next to each other it's, there's a big fucking world out there that doesn't give a shit about your problems. Yeah. And you're worried about that kind of stuff. That's kind of what drives me insane about these the, the tribalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah, think that, yeah. that what we need to celebrate is the individual. 
the, the this tribalism, this collectivism is fucking our, our heads up. It's yeah, like, it is. You're, and because there's there's obviously, and this is the thing that the purity spiral is so fucking weird is, even in that tribe, you're not gonna you could be you you could be a hooligan, but your son might turn out to be gay. Then what are you gonna do? Are like, you gonna disown that fucking guy because he doesn't mm. fit your like tribal? Mm. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a thing. It's like the world's messy, life's messy. So don't uh, this whole like trying to like make everything fucking controlled yeah. by, through this tribal meme is it's it's gonna fuck people's heads up, and that's what's happening right now. I think in everything. Yeah, which we're all like, genres genre fucking sucks. You're, you're trying to box something in that should be fucking Free. yeah. And our forefathers <clears throat> in music kind of like dispelled it as well, you know. Everyone was like, you know, these kind of like subgenres and whatnot, mm. you know. It's st- like you say, it still does happen. I think people just need to. I thought the internet was going to change all of it, it's yeah. only made it worse. Yeah, that's right. And I think there's, people just need something, whether it's church, whether it's football, whether it's a genre, whether it's, they like to feel like they conform up until someone tells them they're conforming. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Interesting, yeah. I, w- I wouldn't disagree with that at all. I, I think that confirmation bias is, is to some degree in all of us, and I think we, we all have habits, you know, and most people stop giving a shit about certain cultural things mm. impacting them as they get also like, your, your teens, you're very impressionable, you're very open, you have the time to absorb, you know, culture and art, and then you have to grow up, and in your 20s and 30s, um, you know, most, most normal people are getting mm. jobs and having kids and families, not, not like us. And so we're, 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 we're the culture givers we're, we're, we're hopefully contributing to that cultural wealth for someone yeah. to at a later point be interested in but most people what they have in their teens is what they take through to their 40s yes and then they rediscover things maybe or they're still going to pink floyd concerts with long gray hair you know yeah. so it's you have a very small envelope of time to absorb the culture i mm. think fully and it's it's your teens and that's when you're trying to rebel but what are people rebelling against so i'm thinking that in the next generation, our kids are actually going to grow up super conservative, conservative or something. Yeah, totally. And they're going to kick back against the sort of liberal weirdness. Yeah, yeah, which will <clears throat> throw... Yeah, because at the moment, it is like, um, I guess, what, what punk was kind of rebelling against, like the yeah. whole kind of... Nanny state. Yeah, nanny state. Yeah. And I th- That's I what think, it is right now, right? I, I, yeah. I mean, everywhere. Yeah. I, and, and, and look, I'm not saying everyone needs to suddenly become edgelords. I'm not saying everyone needs to be like, you know, fuck the popo and mm. the fuck women's rights and all this. No, it's, it's going to just naturally evolve where I think comedy is the first place we're going to see it f- fail and rise again. I was, you know? I, the comedy, I was, I, I was talking about this the other day, like comedy is one of the last true surviving outspoken art forms. I, I think. It has to be. Yeah. Every, in, within every joke, there's a small rebellion. Yeah. And, and. Uh, I love it. Yeah. It's, well, it's. It. I, I I could never be funny in my life. I, I don't know how they do it. It's incredible. I, I was watching uh, Norm Macdonald, and he's a uh, fucking hilarious and very unpolitically correct um, person. And the thing, political correctness is a Soviet term, and it's designed for you know to stop you dis- from dissenting against the, the the power structure. And that's not the world we want to live in. We do not want to be in Soviet fucking Russia. And I know we don't want to offend people, but it goes back to failure. Mm. You learn something from being offended because I'm you if, if you say to me like I'm let's just pretend I'm a super Christian and you say to me God's not real and I say you you you, you just offended me uh, it's like I I don't have an opportunity to get more reflexive in my own position if I'm only being wanting to hear what I already think mm. you're not able to debate people I've I've got into conversations with people where they've just walked out on me they because they don't know how to communicate that they haven't thought their own ideas through yeah. so if we're living in a world where it's a hug box and then suddenly someone fucking comes along and goes, by the way, your whole thing is bullshit. Hello. And here's why. And they list actual reasons. And you're like, duh, duh, duh. Yeah, and the, 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 all that hug box was for fucking nothing. Mm. Your success in the hug box isn't real. Mm. So, I mean, I can go on for hours about all that shit. It's amazing, dude. That's the other thing I'm doing when I'm not doing work is just on the internet. Just watch, watching, studying. consuming fucking other shit. More, way more intelligent people than I'll ever be. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but you you've you've got a, you've got a head on your shoulders, which is really. Well, sick. we have to. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we don't have day jobs. Yeah, exactly. If I had a day yeah, job, yeah, I wouldn't need to think. Completely. No offense to anyone who has a day job. But no, no, that's right. You have to keep on your you toes. You have to muse and ponder and <clears throat> kind of figure stuff out. I mean, the amount of stuff that we um, we pick out at random it's like a good creative idea isn't it it's like you've got to have the space to do it yeah and it's the same with coming up with ideas based off of information well, it's that, that old fucking uh, cliche of uh, you know if you keep, keep on doing the same thing over and over again you're expecting yeah, yeah. different results it's a sign of crazy yeah, 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 you're crazy yeah, yeah. yeah it's absolutely fucking right <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know
What do you, what do you, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Sure. So what do you think the future of the music industry is? The future of the music industry? Did you expect it to go the way it went? If like if, if from ten years ago when we like were meeting in, in London, did you expect oh, it to yeah, be like that? I think I think it's got better. I think it's well, it's better. Yeah, it's better. Um, I think it's congested. Um, I don't think it's. I, I mean, we've got a real answer for that one. Okay. I'm not sure how you can decongest the the noise and the traffic of like stuff being put out. Every, yeah. Um, and it's also it's it's actually quite scary that stylistically, if you if you're a really awesome guitarist has just come up with the most amazing new thing that not even Van, Eddie yeah. like Van Halen had thought of, then all of a sudden it's like it gets ripped off of you yeah. and thrown back into a wider audience of a new Instagram user because he saw you do it and you've only got a thousand views. Interesting. Do you know what I mean? That That's quite scary because you, you don't actually create the individual talent, the icons, the icons. Celebrating that. The, yeah, the, the one creator. person. Yeah. Um, don't worry, European Article 13 and 11 will fix that problem. <laughs> What do you mean? Oh, they're, they're passing this thing in, in the European Union where it's you need a license to repost anyone's content. That's going to be fun. You have to actually pay like a, an actual fee if you wanted to like repost a video that's not your own or to get clearance from the... It's, it's generally for news organizations, so if you're reposting oh, their stuff. But it could be used across many different platforms. Wow. So that's going to suck. Wow. And it just got past the first Will round of Will you be able votes. to repost this, this podcast? Well, because you created it, and I'd need to ask your permission. All oh, right. Yeah, but thankfully, because you're an independent and you're not a company, I would think we could uh, negotiate that. Yeah, yeah. But it's more like if Fox News wants to repost a CNN article, they okay. need to pay a fee in order to do that, that kind of thing. Although it, that's the wrong example because it's not not applicable in America yet. It would be just the European Union. Just the European Union? Yeah, so any so any news company that didn't want to comply just wouldn't mm. wouldn't, wouldn't be showing their <laughs> news on your phone. You know, that's that weird. Wow, that's fun. A little bit. <clears throat> that's bend over and do as we say. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Wow. The future's bright, ladies and gentlemen. Ring light bright. Ring light bright, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure. Lee, it's always a pleasure, man. Yeah, my dude. Yeah, no, and so thank you for be... listening, everyone. Yeah, man, make some noise. We'll do it at home in your own convenience. Frank music. It's like... Thanks for watching. Killer Keller podcast. Stay lucky and stay out of trouble, all right? Bye. <laughs>